I've been feeling pretty lost lately, mostly because I've been spending a lot of my free time playing various maze games, and you will be amazed by how many times I say the word maze in this video. Now a lot of games do have somewhat maze-like level design, like Metroidvanias and Boomer Shooters, but I'm focusing more on true mazes, I guess you could call them, but a lot of them do have some pretty cool twists that make for a fun time. The inspiration for this video comes from a short and free game called 20 Small Mazes, but these aren't your typical puzzles, each one has its own little gimmick, like being able to shrink and stretch the maze, breaking down some of its walls, or having gravity switch directions on you every few moves. What I like most here is that you can solve any of the puzzles in any order you'd like, so if you get stuck, just drag the maze off to the side and start on a new one. It took me an hour to complete, and I'm really looking forward to whatever the developer releases next. While that one was a pretty zen experience with a nice pastel palette, Truffle, also free, is a bit more rage-inducing. This one's less about actually solving puzzles, since the levels are quite simple, and more about not hitting any of the walls. It's like one big game of operation, and picking up some of the optional collectibles can be pretty intense, so play at your own risk. How could I make a video about maze games without mentioning The Witness? I actually just started playing it yesterday, and it's already stumped me quite a few times. There's definitely no shortage of mazes here, and I think there's a nice balance between solving puzzles on these screens and walking around, admiring the scenery. It's honestly surprising how much the game does with the actual mazes themselves, though, as I've already come across a good amount of puzzles that I have no idea how to solve yet. Yeah, there's probably going to be a full video on this game at some point, once I actually start to wrap my head around how complex it is. Another free one, there's a lot of them on this list if you haven't already noticed, Dio is a split-screen platformer for one or two players, and the way you solve these mazes is positioning, merging, and jumping between two halves of the screen. Sometimes you'll get to the exit by accident, and other times you'll feel like a genius for actually figuring out the quote-unquote right solution. Plus, it's inspired by Greek mythology, and it actually started off as a student project. Super, super polished and impressive, I would 100% be willing to pay for it. And last in the puzzle game section is Please Touch the Artwork, which is made up of three different puzzle sections, and one of them is a hectic series of mazes that's supposed to represent the streets of New York City. There's not much to it, just scooting around and collecting some black squares, but very mazy nonetheless. In a way, the Monument Valley games are kind of like 3D mazes where you have to twist and turn walkways, press buttons, and wander around until you find the exit. It's sort of a mix between a puzzle game and a chill game, but its vibe and presentation are totally unbeatable. If you're into optical illusions, impossible spaces, fantastic sound design, I'd say these games are a must play. Light Maze is short and free. Move your block around in the darkness, and the maze lights up more as you slide past each block. There's not much to it, but it's a nice stress reliever or just a way to spend a spare 15 or 20 minutes. I have not yet played Labyrinth City Pierre the Maze Detective, but I do fondly remember the books as a kid, and just having so much fun just taking in all the details and following Pierre along on all his adventures. It makes perfect sense that it was adapted into a point-and-click game, and it's very highly rated on Steam, so it might be worth looking into more. Whether you think Null Gravity Labyrinth is chill or headache-inducing will depend on your tolerance for, I don't know, being spatially confused, but I thought it was a pretty unique experience. The idea of a maze that extends in every direction where there's no up or down, and all for the low, low price of free. So download this one, throw on your favorite trippy tunes, light up, and you're in for a pretty weird night as you cruise through truly mind-bending spaces in search of magic portals and glowing cubes. And now for a couple non-maze games that still feature mazes in them at some point. Of course, there's the Croft Manor Hedge Maze from Tomb Raider 2. The combination of this narrow path and tank controls really do make this an extremely disorienting maze, and, you know, the fact that everything in here looks exactly the same. Tomb Raider Remastered might not be for everyone, but I think it's pretty fun. Resident Evil 4 also has a hedge maze. I just love this game, so had to mention it here. You should really play it if you haven't. I'm mentioning the Breath of the Wild Labyrinths because 
I know that some of you are gonna comment if I don't. I did play some of this game, but I never got to these parts. They're mazes, they're in the video. And the last non-maze game example that came to my mind is The Unfinished Swan, which I think is a super underrated puzzle game from the PS3 days. Visually, it's super striking and mainly uses this paint mechanic where you throw out balls of paint in order to help visualize the environment around you. Last, we have the horror section. I'm sure there are a lot more examples for this category than I could come up with, but here are a few to get you started. It Steals comes from the creator of Lethal Company, one of the first games they ever released. It's sort of a survival horror hide-and-seek thing, like most of the games here, and yeah, it probably would scare me pretty bad if I played it. Labyrinth of the Demon King has not been released yet, and it seems like it relies more on unsettling grossness than just pure jump scares. Definitely not for the squeamish. It also has a lot of combat. It's inspired by Kingsfield, Silent Hill, and Resident Evil, set in feudal Japan, so add it to your wish list. Zardy's Maze is a very short, free horror game that takes place in a corn maze. There's not really much to it besides the spooky Halloween theme, but a second game is in the works that looks to be a much more fleshed out experience with more areas to explore. And most of that game is actually set underneath the corn maze from the first title, so in addition to spooks, you also have to watch out for claustrophobia and such. Looks like a lovely game to release around Halloween time, maybe? Last is another unreleased game, Deep Sleep Labyrinth of the Forsaken, which is probably the most up my alley out of all these horror games, because it's more of a psychological horror than just being chased by a monster through a maze. You'll travel through dreams where you're able to shift and shape them around, and who knows what sort of nightmares you'll stumble into. Thanks for sticking around and looking at all these maze games with me. If you like this sort of themed video, I also did one on handmade games and photography in games, both of which I'm pretty proud of, so check them out. <laughs>